the sales world gave me the opportunity to take my beautiful wife on a trip like that, that some people will unfortunately will never get to experience. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll say this, they'll choose never to experience. Exactly. Welcome to the Millionaire Car Salesman Podcast, the number one resource for automotive sales professionals, managers, and owners to learn how to make money, accumulate wealth, and to all out ball out in the auto industry. And now your hosts, Sean V. Bradley and L.A. Williams. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is L.A. Williams, and I'm here live on the Millionaire Car Salesman podcast. And man, I've got a phenomenal guest for you today. As a matter of fact, this gentleman has been requested. I mean, people that have heard his story are like, L.A., you got to get him on the podcast because I want to know what this guy is doing. This this gentleman is pretty much brand new to the automotive industry. I mean, he was out there, he was selling motorcycles and all of that good stuff, right? But he all he transferred over uh, and started selling cars. Cars. And if it's to my understanding, right, let, and you can tell me if I'm incorrect on this one, right? <laughs> I heard, right, that this gentleman sold 21 cars in his first 18 days as an automotive sales professional. So without further ado, we're going to find out if this is actually true. We're going to hear it from the horse's mouth. Everybody give it up for my main man, Mr. Zach Williams. What's up, Zach? <laughs> What's up, brother? First man, of all, we share, we share a last name, so you know we're definitely brothers, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I don't feel bad saying that now. <laughs> man, I'm honored. I'm honored. I really am. I, I've been listening to this podcast, uh, and I honestly probably wouldn't be where I was today without it. So. Uh, when I got requested and asked if I would do this, I was like, man, where's Aston Kutcher, bro? I'm getting punked. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, man, we definitely appreciate you, man. This is super, this is this is great stuff. So tell us, first of all, is is that accurate? Is Are those the real numbers? What happened? Yeah, man, that's 100% accurate. Um, I am brand stinking new into the automotive industry, you know, I am as green pea as a pea can be, bro. I mean, <laughs> um, but I just, man, I hit the ground running and, you know, I didn't want to be one of these cats that was just sitting here making up excuses for not getting, you know, not getting sales. Like, oh, I'm just waiting around for a, a lot up or, oh man, the internet department's just not giving me, giving me leads or this or that, you know? So I like kind of took the reins in my own hands and was like, I know enough people everyone needs a car. Like, what is it that, that these other salespeople are doing that I'm not, you know, everyone has 24 hours in a day. So, you know, I don't care who you are. If, if someone else is doing it and you're not, you're either making an excuse not to do it or you're just not trying. So yeah, man, those numbers are a hundred percent accurate. It was funny because um, my first day, I ended up making a sell to one of my really good friends and you know, I had that, I had that seller's high, right. You know, so Mm -hmm. I'm like walking around I'm like, dude, this is cool. I got this. (laughs) And of course, like, you know, my GM came in, uh, Randy Hart, super, super awesome dude took me under his wing. But of course, you know, he gave me the GM speech. He's like, you know, I sold a car my first day too, man, you know, and I was like, (laughs) all right, all right, I got you. You And then the second day I sold another car and I was like, okay, okay. Um, (laughs) And then um, it just kept going and kept going to where the whole first week, I basically was batting a thousand. I mean, I was five days in, five cars sold. Mm. And then the second week, I uh, only sold four my second week, so I was at nine. Only, nine. only sold four, he said. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I'd only sold four. So, you know, in my head, I was like, oh, man, I've been here 10 days and I only sold nine cars. Well, my third week, I ended up pulling my first hat trick and caught me back up to, you know, where I, you know, where I was batting 100 or, or 1,000, you know, 100% efficiency. So I just, man, I've been, I've been chasing the seller's high, you know, constantly just – feeding off that positive energy and and trying to apply it to you know pushing forward and and keeping that momentum going 
That is beautiful stuff, man. So there's so many questions that are popping into my mind, you know, as you tell your story. First of all, I, look, the folks want to know, they want to know, like, what are you like? Did you, would you wake up and eat for breakfast? I want, I mean, they want to brush their teeth the way you do. They want to put their clothes <laughs> on the same way you do. All of that good stuff. So I know I want to talk about that, but I'm going to rewind a little further back, people. So before this, you were in um, selling, what is it, Harley Davidson? Is that right? Yeah, absolutely, man. Okay. Um if you if you were to see me and then you were like if this was a test and mm-hmm. you saw a picture of me and then you saw a Harley Davidson logo and then you saw a Ford emblem all day long you're going to be like this guy sells Harleys right okay. <laughs> <laughs> like the Harley world is just the that's the lifestyle I live you know i've i've had multiple multiple uh motorcycles multiple Harleys um i just eat, sleep, and breathe Harleys. That was my thing. Um, and in fact, and I'm sure you'll want to dive off in this a little bit later, but I actually had 2013, I had a horrific motorcycle accident that, uh, I ended up like coding twice, like Mm. serious, like $1.2 million in medical bills. Like, uh, it was just a huge ordeal. Like in Memphis, Tennessee, I had a lot of people just come together and and I literally had people like coming to the hospital to give blood in my name because I was bleeding so much. Like yeah. I went through 27 units of blood in nine days. Like it's just a it, crazy story. We'll get into yeah. that later, I'm sure. But, um, that, you know, even after that, like I still rode and it blew people's minds. So, um, well, you, I love actually, something, you love something. I, exactly, man. Exactly. And so I got approached as funny story. I'll kind of give you a, a quick background. Um, I actually, in 2010, I started the clothing line and I had same situation, hit the ground running with that. It kind of blew up in the Memphis area and even got uh, nation and worldwide there for a little while. I uh, kind of took that momentum and then developed it into like a promotions company. And essentially what I would do is I would go to these different club nightclubs and bars and I had a, a plethora of DJs that I worked with. And I basically came to these bars was like, Hey, how much money do you make on this night? And they would tell me and I'd be like, all right, if I can double that, will you pay me this much money? And of course they're like, well, absolutely. So I brought in a DJ. I brought in all my like video and photography work and all that. So dude, I did that for like two years. i basically got paid to party. <laughs> so <laughs> that's cool. Right. So a big part of my like little following came from that. So then it got, it got to the point where I was like, all right, Zach, we got to think about our future here. Like we need to get into something, get your career moving in the right direction, still doing the same stuff you love, but man, let's get some benefits, bro. Like what's a 401k, but you know, like <laughs> let's get some insurance. So, um, I actually took a job as the sales and marketing coordinator for a hard rock cafe. So dude, I'm getting paid by, uh, you know, a killer company to do what I love. I was, you know, throwing these concerts and these events and all that. Um, and in fact, you know, I was like, dude, what goes better with hard rock music than Harley Davidson's? (laughs) And everyone was like, dang, we never thought of that. And I was like, so I put together this huge event, right? That involved Harley. And apparently I just blew the meeting out of the water because like shortly after the meeting, the GM, the GM of the Harley dealership walked up to me and kind of nudged me on my shoulder and was like, Hey man, you ever thought about working for Harley? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, dang, bro, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Because I was seriously like, just if you if you see me and you see that my image and the way I live my life, I, you know I've got a very specific style, and um, it was funny that he had asked me that because once I knew I had this event going for for the Harley Davidson community, I had told one of my coworkers, "I was like, bro, like there's two companies that could steal me away from like that hard rock, you know, iconic logo," mm-hmm. and I was like, Red Bull. Or Harley Davidson. <laughs> Boom. All of a sudden, Harley Davidson's knocking on my door, and I'm like, God, I got to answer it, bro. <laughs> like, Talk about the law of attraction. <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> so, um, so just I'll, I'll try and speed this up. So, uh, 
Take long your time. Story. They want to soak it all in. <laughs> I heard that. All right. So long story short, man, uh, I, w- I went over to Harley as their marketing manager and was, dude, absolutely loved it. I mean, I was just, it was so much fun. I, the atmosphere, the Harley lifestyle. Uh, I mean, dude, we were throwing events on the weekends, grilling out for all free food, giving away free beer and you know, all the motorcycles and the good looking girls and the tattoos and just, it's that lifestyle. And I was, I was just so taken over by it. So I did that for a while in the marketing world at the Harley dealership. And then management came to me and was like, Hey man, you talk to people real well. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, thanks. <laughs> Um, I was like, what's coming next? You know, I was like, there's got to be a butt or something like mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. you're a good person, but you're fired. Right. <laughs> right. And, um, so then all of a sudden they're like, have you ever thought about sales? And I sat there and thought about it and I was like, I mean, no, but <laughs> you know, you and it's funny, too, because I listen to you all the time, and it's like the same repeating story from all these salesmen. They're like, no one was ever born wanting to go into car sales, mm-hmm. you know? But, man, like, I was like, dude, it's it's all the stuff that I like to do. Like, yeah. I like helping people out. I like talking to people. And I like fixing things. Like, someone comes in needing a vehicle. There's something wrong. There's a, there's a there's a broken piece of the puzzle that I can now help them fix that. And I love doing that with people. So I was like, dude, I'm down. But I will say, LA, I was nervous at first. Like, I know my personality. And, and you know, like, I know that I've always, any job I've had, I've always just done everything I could to get to the next level. Like, let's, let's, let's learn everything there is to learn so I can apply this and better myself and build and build and build. So I was like, but I was nervous. I've never worked in sales before. So I told the manager, I was like, Hmm, I was like, I'll do it on one condition. I was like, you know, I'm at this point, I was about to be married like later on that year. So I was like, I can't set myself up for failure. So I was like, I'll move on one condition. I keep my same salary Mm. plus my commission. My GM stopped for a second (laughs) and he looked at me and I I didn't back down. And so he was like, all right, let's do it. I love it. So I, I, man, I jumped in on the sales floor and dude, I haven't, I have not enjoyed working as much as I have in sales, like I, I did, I hit the ground running and, um, I was doing really good, doing really good, but I was still like mediocre. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't anything to, to be on a podcast about, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I, I was super green at that point and I'm learning the process and then I'm learning to trust these general managers. Cause I get it right. Like I, I'm listening to them and I, I keep hearing them, but I haven't seen it fulfill in my life yet. So right. like I still was a little weary and then man, about a year ago, LA, I don't know what happened to me. I must've had like a premonition, like in my sleep or something. Cause I woke up and it was like, boom, the light switch had been turned on. And I was like, dude, my manager's right. Like, <laughs> it, <laughs> what a the not, <laughs> the, right. What's what, what a concept, like the numbers work. So, um, I'm about to say this and I'm sure all the car guys are going to laugh and fall out of their chairs when I tell you like how little outreach we had to do, but it was still like pulling teeth at the Harley shop. Mm -hmm. We only had to make a hundred phone calls a week, bro. Mm -hmm. And some of the other motorcycle sales guys were literally did the very least they had to do to like get by. Right. Like, Mm -hmm they would keep like a notepad and do tick marks to make sure like they did just enough to not get in trouble. Mm -hmm. And man, when I woke up this day, I was like, man, screw this. Like I was like, I'm, I'm going to be at work. There's downtime. Why not spend it making phone calls and making money? Cause I'll tell you what happened LA. We were again, we were coming up getting married and I was like, man, what do I need to do to like pick up a second job? to, Mm. you know, help pay off this wedding. And then, man, I'm sitting there and I was like, 
why would I take a second job when I can just apply myself even better at my normal job and double my results? Mm. Like I said, everybody's got the same 24 hour day, right? Yeah. So, so if I'm working eight, nine, 10 hours at my normal job, and then I go pick up a four hour shift somewhere else, like why, why am I putting myself through 12 or 14 hours of work to make the same amount of money that if I had just applied myself to my eight hour job, why wouldn't I do that? Right. So dude, I started making as many phone calls as I could, bro. My customers were like, Zach, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but dude, I, I, I jumped up. I'm making, you know, like I said, our minimum was a hundred phone calls a week, bro. I'm making 320 phone calls, 350 phone calls a week, you know, tripled my numbers mm -hmm. from that point on LA. I was the number one salesperson from that point on. Oh, wow. So look, kind of devil's advocate, right? So even though you had customers saying, leave me alone, you obviously had some customers that said, oh, thank you. Thank you for calling, you know, and then I'm absolutely something. Wow. That's absolutely amazing. And so you, you hit on so many key points that we're going to have to kind of like comb through this, right? All right. First of, first of all, you know, in, in the beginning, right? Because people think, right, that you you must have, you know, just grown and all of a sudden just been a rock star because you said you were <laughs> successful in other businesses, things like that. And then they hear uh, that you were, like you said, kind of middle of the road in uh, the motorcycle business. Uh, and then all of a sudden you had that that premonition, right? And it, it just clicked for you. And it's a simple concept. You know, the numbers are the numbers are the numbers. You can't beat the numbers and the numbers can't beat you. So all of those are powerful things. But I think, you know, some of the keys that you hit on really is about the mindset, the mindset that you have to have. First of all, the coachability mindset, right? First of all, you know, your managers, they only want you to be successful because every time you're successful, they're successful. They're right? successful. Yeah. Um, the other half is even when you talked about the whole job situation, right? So many people act like they don't have nothing to fight for, man. You had something to fight for with this whole wedding thing, marriage thing. How old are you, man? Man, I'm 30, brother. 30 years old, right? And so he's got the mentality, right? He's like, listen, I got something to fight for. I got something. Listen, I'm so, I want a, a beautiful wedding, you know, with my queen. And so I'm going to do whatever it takes. And again, so many people just don't ever make that commitment. They don't ever, you know, go through. I think if people knew unequivocally that if they did the work necessary, if they did the work required, that they would get the, uh, the results, then I think people would do it. The challenge is people fear, right? They're like, oh, well, mm -hmm. you know, I don't really know. And I'm telling you, so you, you really rocked it on that one. Even uh, when you talked about with, you know, your, your manager and you said, hey, listen, I'll do it. Because if you think about it, you weren't asking for a sales job, right? They were right. asking you to do the sales job. So when someone is asking you, that means that you have the leverage and that means you can uh, you know, state your demands. You know what I'm saying? Bro, balls in my court, brother. <laughs> this is, is coming up after a podcast that I just finished recording. And the gentleman who was on, uh, Danny said, uh, I love being on shaky ground, right? And you said, you, know, you felt unsafe. He's, he just said that. He also talked about how uh, being different is better than better. And you also talked about your image and how you don't necessarily fit the Ford, you know, stereotype, right? You right. also fit that. And so, man, all of these things are just stringing together. I'm just the conduit, man. I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not doing any, I'm not that good. Or I'm not that good of a planner, none of that stuff. But these podcasts just seem to string together and give the listeners exactly what it is that they need. So, um, totally appreciate that. So talk about this because you're, you're talking to the millionaire car salesman listeners, right? So folks like yourself who listen to this podcast are people that want to make money. So talk about what did it do for you financially uh, when you went through all of these changes? So talk about maybe what you were making uh, as a, and here's the thing, don't, don't get it twisted because I totally agree and encourage people to have their own thing, you know, going on. I mean, have a clothing line, have some stuff going on. Right. But I do want you to talk about the financial aspect. How did it go from, what was it like? I mean, you were doing the club promotion thing and then you were working with hard rock and you got your benefits, I guess. Right. 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 <laughs> and then you shifted over and you were doing the hundred calls and then you did the, uh, the 320 calls. Can you just talk about those financial transitions? Yeah, man, absolutely. Basically, when I was working in the, when I was the marketing manager, dude, I was making a flat hourly rate. I was making 18 bucks an hour. Okay. Um, 
you know, that is more than, you know, the average American makes, but also it's nothing to write home about. And if anyone's listening to this podcast, you know, they're in the automotive industry and they have the opportunity to make incredible amounts of money. In fact, the, the one percentile amounts of money. Um, it's funny, uh, just real quick. When I wrecked my motorcycle, I was making about $120,000 a year. Okay. And when I got, it took me over a year LA to recoup from that just physically. Like, dude, they told me that I never walk again. They told me I never do this. They thought I was going to be brain dead. Like it was just an incredible situation. And so I went from making $120,000 a year, LA, I lost my house. I had a awesome four bedroom house. I lost a $30,000 car. I had two uh, Harleys, obviously the one that got totaled. I got another one that got repoed. I mean, I went from riches to rags real quick. And <laughs> Listen to how we think about that. It was just roadblock. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly, man. It's a little, well, little obstacle. <laughs> right? So I'm sitting there uh, after I'd kind of gotten back better and was mobile, and I was in the gym. And one of my really good friends came up to me, and I, I, I guess he could just tell, like, I was – he was asking me about what was going on in my life. And I told him, I was like, man, just trying to find a job, but – you know, I just can't find anything that pays me what I deserve. Right. You know, I was like, I'm trying to find these jobs that are, you know, 40, $45 an hour. And my, my friend had to slow me down and be like, look, bro. He was like, when you first started working, did you start off making that much money? I was like, well, no. And he was like, well, how'd you get to make that money? I was like, Man, I dedicated myself. I did what was necessary to get to the next level. Once I got there, I wasn't satisfied. I knew I was better than that. So I applied myself again, got to the next level, and then so on and so on and so on. He's like, so you worked your way up from the bottom. I was like, yeah. He's like, dude, the amount of money you're talking about wanting to make is the top 1% of what Americans make. Now, granted, that's, you know, that, you know, six figure to, these billionaires is a big jump, but still he was like, you're, you're talking about something that if you ask 10 of your friends, how much money they make, there's, you're going to be the one making the most money. Right. And I was like, okay, you're putting it in perspective for me. <laughs> I just did the, um, the calculations just so you know, I'm in the financial industry myself and mm -hmm. I was just at a convention and it is actually about 95% of America let, makes less than $118,000 a year. So you were in the top 5%. Five, hey man, I'll take it, bro. <laughs> 5%. Um, so so that put me in perspective. So I was like, all right, let's start working, you know, look, fine. Like I'm going to work my way back up. Mm -hmm. So anyways, at this point I'm making 18 bucks an hour. And you, you know? did it before. That's the cool part. You did it before. So it's like, all right, I did it before I could do it again. Exactly. So, um, when they asked me to take on the sales floor, I was real nervous, you know? And I told them straight up, I was like, bro, I got a wedding to plan and pay for. I was like, I'm not interested in a hundred percent commission job it just it is what it is that's the position i'm in and like you said man the ball was in my court because they came to me they saw a number associated to me that i could make them la i'm not i don't have the degree like you do but uh you know it's it's so funny because if you ask me what two plus two is man i'm gonna tell you five but if mm. you ask me what two dollars plus two dollars is it's four all day long if you put a simple dollar sign there i'm on it right <laughs> like i'm gonna know my money so, you know, I told them, I was like, I'm not interested in it. And so they accepted my offer at 18 bucks an hour plus my commissions. And, I, you know, obviously that was an increase, you know, because I'm getting paid commissions on top of that. But that whole time that I was that mediocre salesman, you know, I, I still wasn't, I, I was making good money, but I was like, dude, I know I can make more. And then, you know, I woke up that one day and started doubling my numbers and dude, I, I got to the point where I was doing, you know, 10,000, eight, eight to $10,000 months. Right. And when I tell you, you know, you're talking about the millionaire car salesman podcast and it's all, you know, what's the money dude, that, that put me in a whole nother mindset, bro. Like I paid for my wedding, bro. We cash flowed that thing. Right. Mm. And 
we went on a incredible honeymoon. Like we stayed in one of those over the water bungalows with the, with the, um, we had our own private Butler 24 seven. Like it was seriously something out of a movie that these, that people dream of. Mm. And the sales world gave me the opportunity to take my beautiful wife on a trip like that, that some people will unfortunately will never get to experience. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll say this, they'll choose never to experience. Exactly. Mm. Mac. (laughs) (laughs) So um, yeah, man, the cell, the sales life, it, it put me back to the, to making what I knew I deserved. And, you know, when I say, you know what I deserve, it's not a, you know, it's not an arrogant or cocky thing. It's just, I know, you know, I know I'm going to do what it takes to make that money. And, um, and I know what my worth is, you know, coming from the marketing background, I know what a ROI is, you know, yeah. I know what a return on investment is. So when I go to these companies and I ask for my numbers, I'm going to show them what I can give them. And that either works for me or it doesn't. And if it doesn't work for me, it's fine. I still know what I'm worth and I'm going to get paid that because I mean, my last two months before I left the Harley world, I put $93,000 in their pocket after they paid me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm putting $45,000 a month more than in your pocket after you pay me. Who's not going to make that deal, right? Right, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> LA, if I could give you $45,000 a month, you're going to take it? <laughs> you know it. <laughs> yeah, right. Five. Every single time. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, man, the Ford dealership came. They stole me, man. And it was funny because... Uh, uh, Tell us that I, story. We definitely want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, man, I, t- I turned them down three times. <laughs> that sounds like me and Sean Bradley. I told I turned him down a bunch of times. Oh man. Well look at you now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um yeah, so uh I had a friend who was working at the Ford dealership and she started asking me some questions. And it was funny because the, the way she was asking the questions, I thought she was interested in coming to work for the Harley dealership mm-hmm. and not vice versa, right? So what'd she say? What'd she say? Tell us. Well, she was just asking, she's like, Hey man, like, you know, what's a salesperson over there make? And so in my head, I'm like, all right, well, I, you know, I don't want to set her up for, right. you know, s- some false information. So I was giving her about averages. So, you know, on average, you make about this, this is the percentages they pay you, which the car guys are going to trip out too on when I say this, because I did not realize how different the Harley world was from the car world. Mm -hmm. So I was making seven to 10% of gross on my motorcycles. Right. But I, I averaged about 4,500 gross per unit sold. So my gross was a little bit more than the car world, but obviously that, that percentage was way, (laughs) is way low. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm giving her these, these averages. And she's like, okay, okay. And, you know, she's like, well, how many units a month do you sell? And I told her, which, you know, I was probably averaging 18 um, a month, which, you know, if you come to think about it, one one sell every other day for something that someone doesn't need. Mm-hmm. Like, to me, I thought I was doing pretty good, right? You know, right. and um, so I was in Memphis, which is a bigger population. Um, however, we do have a dealership that I was competing with that was about 20 minutes away that was basically giving them away. So, you know, just like the car world, you've got other people to compete with and you're not just going to always, I'm not always going to sell a Ford just because I'm the only Ford dealership around. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was trying to put that in perspective for her too. So then like a week later, she's like, Hey, you want to come out here and work? And I was like, whoa, hold up. What? <laughs> <Blind side. laughs> yeah. I was like, I was not expecting that. And then I was like, uh, not really. And <laughs> she was like, oh, okay. Well, all right. Have, have a good day. <laughs> you know, like I think, I think I caught her off guard too with my uh-huh. response. Then like a week later though, I, she was like, Hey, I think you should really come out here and talk to my, my manager. 
And I was like, no, nah, man, I'm like really good. Like, I love what I do. I make good money. I'm, you know, I live 60 seconds away from my work. Like I literally had just moved to be close to my work. <laughs> um, I was like, I'm straight. And then she hit me up like two weeks later. And I was like, hey, uh, we're, we're, we're in need of some new salespeople. And my general manager asked if I knew anyone that was good in sales. And of course, you're the first person that came to mind. And I was like, I was like, sweetheart, I'm, I'm straight. Like, I appreciate that, you know, vote of confidence. And I'm, you know, I'm humbled by that. I was like, but I really do like what I do. And honestly, LA, I think what was going on was, so I had just been married. We had just found out we were pregnant. So I think I was like freaking out on the inside. I was like, man, there's no way I can make a career jump right mm -hmm. before I have a little girl, especially like it would be one thing if I wasn't doing good, right? Right. A career jump may not have been so scary, but it was like, dude, what if I, what if I, you know, make this gamble and I lose it all? Like now, not only is it just Zach that I have to worry about, I was like, it's my wife and my daughter that mm -hmm. would suffer. So I was nervous, man. And I think that's why I kept pushing it away. So finally, um, I text her back. I was like, Hey, I was like, I'm open to having the conversation because I talked to my wife about it, right? Well, I talked to my we wife can have about the interview. it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know, I've been praying for like a better, not necessarily a better opportunity because, again, I love what I did. But, man, I was having these Harley dealerships all over the United States offering me jobs, right? Like Atlanta, St. Louis, Baton Rouge. Like I had these people offering me like sales manager positions all because of social media uh. they all because of instagram because of certain hashtags i was using i kept popping up on their discover page i mean bro when you see a certain salesperson in a you know memphis unfortunately is not very well known for the, our high credit scores so <laughs> when they see me selling three motorcycles a day multiple times you know they see me selling eight harleys in a in a four-day period they're like hey dude this kid knows what he's doing so they kept offering me jobs so you know i, pr I prayed about it with my wife i was like dude something's coming that we're gonna have to really take a look at and then like so i, I woke up and i was like man i was like maybe it's this ford offer <laughs> you know like i never would have thought of that right like i mm -hmm. loved what i did at harley you know so my mindset, you know, I was so zoned in on like, I'm going to sell Harleys. I'm going to sell Harleys. I'm going to sell Harleys. I was completely overlooking this Ford offer. So I went out there and talked to him. And, uh, take your time, man. Listen, I know it's emotional. It was your dream job. I called my wife shortly after the, <laughs> after the interview. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Hey babe. She's like, what, what what's wrong? I was like, <laughs> I, I screwed up. And she's like, oh, no, you didn't get the job? And I was like, no, I should have asked for more money. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, they, dude, everything I said I wanted, they're like, okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. The negotiation. And I like, dude, <laughs> I know. And I was like, oh, man, I should have asked for more money, babe. <laughs> but, um, dude, I, to put it to you this way, 2020, I should triple what I was making at the Harley dealership. Wow. That is beautiful, man. That's what I'm saying. And that's what's supposed to happen in the daggum automotive industry. And that's beautiful stuff. So again, kind of talk about some of your keys. I heard you mention social media, some of your hashtags, uh, kind of talk about that. You know, what are you doing, man? This is crazy. Again, 21 cars in 18 days. Huge. Okay. Um, so if anyone listening and cause I know I've been very active in some of these Facebook groups and especially the millionaire car salesman Facebook group, I've been very, very active. So if the people listening haven't figured out by now, I am the tattooed sales guy. Um, that is who I've branded myself. Um, before I made that jump, I was like, I was like, babe, what, what's going to happen when I go to a car lot and some old person gets out of their car and they see this dude that looks like he's straight out the pen. Like, <laughs> I was like, they're not going to want me to sell them a car. 
And she's like, dude, your personality is what's going to get you there. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. That ain't your market. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I don't want to buy from you. That's not your market, man. Exactly. Selling to everybody, you're not selling to anybody. Trust me. Exactly. So, um, so I sat down and I was like, all right, well, we're going to have to market myself a specific way. Like, we're just going to have to own that persona, right? Like, I, you know, I've got my throat tattooed. I've got my hands tattooed. I've, I'm sleeved up. Like, there is no hiding these tattoos. So it's like, mm -hmm. we're, I was like, we're going to have to own this. So I started, you know, Googling and searching and, and you know, I'm, yeah, I've actually been coaching a couple of people off the millionaire car salesman, uh, Facebook group. They're like, how do you do this? And they're trying to, I'm trying to get them set up with branding themselves. And I'm like, dude, coming up with your name and, or your slogan or whatever you're going to brand yourself is the hardest part about it. Cause you got to come up with something that's catchy, something that people are going to either, you know, pull towards or can relate to. So I told my wife, I was like, man, we're going to have to just own it that I'm the tattooed guy. And so I started searching, you know, and when, when I recommend people search and you got to search URLs for a website, you got to search and see if the Facebook page is available. You've got to search and see if the Instagram page is available. If you tweet, if the Twitter's available, you know, there's a lot of working, you know, gears in this to, to be able to pull this off. Right. Stuff um, that 20 years ago was totally not even, I mean, you could probably do the website thing, but think about it 30 years ago, none of this stuff you were doing. So your no. managers and stuff can't even train you on this stuff when they were in the business 30 years ago. Sorry. I, absolutely not, man. And that's why they, they've been kind of blown away. Cause I start talking to them about certain things and they're like, Zach, just do it. I don't <laughs> even know what you're talking about. Um, so yeah, man. So I locked down my URL I, put, I built myself a website. I've got um, my, th my three main social medias is my Facebook, my Instagram, and my YouTube. And you can find them all under the Tattooed Sales Guy. Um, shameless plug right there for you. Hey, love it. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> right? So, um, man, I, uh, I hit the ground running. I actually, I started promoting my business page, my Facebook business page, the Tattooed Sales Guy. 42 days ago. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I've only worked out of those 42 days because actually in, within me starting this Facebook or not this Facebook, but this transition to the Ford, mm -hmm. we had our beautiful little baby girl. So I'm a brand new dad. So oh, man, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. That's, that's a huge part of my, um, you know, like my push to be better. But, um, so I've, I've taken some time off in these last 42 days. Um, like I think I've only worked actually 23 days or 21 days, something like that. Um, since I've started, but bro, since I started all my social media push, like my Facebook page has a page reach of 47.9 thousand page reaches, which are people that have seen, my post on their newsfeed somehow, some way. Um, and so like a lot of these people like I'm teaching are trying to teach on how to utilize social media to their advantage in the car sales world is your content. Your content has to be good just because it pops up in their, their newsfeed. If it's nothing that relates to them or they don't like it, they're just going to scroll right on past and, and you're not getting that, that interaction that you need to start building your referral business. Um, so actually, um, out of the 47.9 thousand page reaches, I, I'm averaging about 10% on, on page views, which is like 43, almost 4,400 page views, which means mm -hmm. those people actually came to my page to check it out because of what they saw. Mm -hmm. Um, which is actually really good on, on social media, Conversion, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It is. Um, so yeah, man, I, I, I've just been utilizing that, uh, uh, building up all my content on both my website and all forms of social media for what is SEO for anyone who doesn't know search engine optimization. If you type in and Google the tattooed sales guy, bro, I'm like the top like 10 hits and it's all because of keeping this content, 
moving and having good content that's relatable and having uh, content that people can interact with. Um, because I've sold, I've sold 20, I've sold 24 cars in the last 23 days. I've worked 23 days. I sold 20. So that's, the update. <laughs> that's my update. Yeah. So I'm, I'm still, I'm still at a hundred percent efficiency, <laughs> um, which is my goal, man. Um, but out of the 24 cars I've sold, only two have been lot ups. Like um, I, I'm doing my best to push a referral based business. You know, I want to be appointment only. Like I want to be so full up with appointments that I don't have time to look at the lot, much huh. less sit around on a golf cart and wait for someone to walk up. It, it just, it is what it is, man. I'm, uh, I don't want to be that, that car salesman. And I would assume that everyone that's listening to this podcast doesn't want to be either because just them listening to this podcast, they're already taking the step in the right direction to figure out what someone else is doing better than what they are. Mm -hmm. And that, that's why I came to this podcast. You know, I, I was told my wife, I was like, I'm real nervous about this phone interview. She's like, why? Wow. I was like, cause LA is going to ask me what book do I recommend? <laughs> I was like, I was like, and babe, I don't read books. I was like, my, I am so dead on ADD. LA, I don't read books. I'm horrible at it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be up front and bust myself out. So I was like, you know, but I'm not gonna let that be a crutch, right? Like right. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I can't I, you know, I'm not a good reader because of my ADD. So oh well, I guess I can't learn anything. No, man, I, I took it to podcasts, I took it to these Facebook groups. Um, you know, I I'm in like four or five different sell, sell, car sales Facebook groups, and I'm like a top fan or whatever Facebook calls you in those because I just I interact so much with people because you know I'm like a sponge man. If someone feels like they can give me some insight or some knowledge, dude, I I will take it all in. I'm I'm open to to take in any type of form of knowledge or or advice and it was funny because i actually had a guy message me last night and he was like hey man i'd like to ask you some questions but you know if you don't have time or you don't feel like it it's fine i was like no man like that's the most selfish thing anyone could do i was like i'm not where i'm at today if people didn't take me under their wing or answer my questions mm -hmm. you know so why would i keep that flow of knowledge why would i damn that up and stop that with me rather than still letting that, you know, flow downstream. I was like, man, I'm, you know, I'm a, a big fan in karma. So like, I wouldn't be where I was today without this podcast, without a couple other podcasts and some, you know, these Facebook groups and like Sean, like taking me in and, and answering some questions and giving me, you know, constructive criticism and stuff. So, um, so LA, I don't read books, but I'll listen to podcasts. <laughs> that was awesome. No, and, and so when we were preparing for this podcast, um, you told me your thought process. You said, you know, you were a motorcycle salesman and you said there was no, you know, obviously, you know, he's like, I'm not reading, but there was no uh, motorcycle salesman podcast. And so kind of tell us that story. Real quick. Yeah, man. Um, so like I said, I woke up that one day and I was like, I got to be better. What can I do to better myself? So I went to the podcast and I was like, all right, Harley salesman podcast, nothing. I was like, crap. I was like, motorcycle salesman podcast, nothing. I was like, oh man, what am I going to do? I was like, um, power sports salesman podcast, nothing. I was like, oh man, I'm going to start having to like cold call some like OGs in the business and that's going to be my podcast. <laughs> Um, so I finally, I stumbled upon, you know, the, uh, millionaire car salesman podcast. And so for about six months before I even, you know, I was still selling Harleys, uh, for about six months, every morning in the gym, I wake up and I go to the gym and every morning I was listening to uh, Mr. LA Williams and, you know, for all those that need to all out ball out in the automotive industry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I just st started taking all this knowledge in and that's what was kind of so funny about when I got approached by the Ford, the Ford company, as I was like, 
damn, I kind of feel like I already know what to do because of these right. podcasts, right? You know? <laughs> That's beautiful stuff. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I've been listening to the podcast for a while, just trying to take in and learn. And I, honestly, I started, I think I started annoying my managers because I would go in every morning and be like, dude, I learned this on the podcast. Or, man, I, what do you think about this? Do you think we could do this? You know, I heard a guy on the podcast talking about this, you know, and I think my manager was like, Bro, stop with the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, I don't even go comment on that type of stuff, but it's just amazing because how can, you know, success annoy you? How can, you know, super brand new ideas, how can that type of stuff annoy you? You got to get excited by that kind of stuff, man. But hey, is this what it is, man? You moved over and so now you're right where you belong. So that's exciting. So talk to us about this. I mean, because again, you, you're really killing it with social media. You're really doing your thing. Um, I think what people want to know is how do you even come up with the ideas to do this? Like who told you, okay, it's hashtags. You got to use hashtags. Who told you, you know, it's about search engine optimization. How'd you even learn that word? Like I remember um, the uh, Chris Rock, he had a, he had a, a comment where he was talking about slaves in America and he's like, who taught you octagon? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So how uh, do you learn search engine optimization? That's a whole different language. I'm a car yeah. salesman. I don't know nothing about that. Right. No, absolutely, man. Well, uh, like I said, a lot of my um, background has been marketing, but LA, I don't have a degree in marketing. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, everything I've done has been self-taught. Like I, I saw something and I wanted it and I got it. And so I had to teach myself all this stuff. So it was like one of those things, the more I start doing my research, the more I learn and the more I learn how to research, right? Mm -hmm. Like yes. the, the more I start digging, the more I start figuring out like, oh, that's what that's called. Like you said, search engine optimization. I would not have learned that word if I hadn't have been searching like marketing, like how can I start putting my name out there? What are some marketing ideas, this and that? So then I hear someone on a podcast talking about search engine optimization, SEO, SEO, SEO. And I was like, what the hell is SEO? Let's <laughs> Google that. Start yeah. looking up SEO. SEO stands for search engine optimization. What is search engine optimization? And basically in layman's terms, it's all the content that is on your websites or social media or whatever that's all conjoining or representing the same thing when it gets searched on Google or Yahoo or um, whatever some of the other search engines are, it pulls you as the top hit because you've got the, there's a bunch of algorithms that go into what they consider good content, but then that's a whole nother rabbit hole for you to start researching. Okay. Yes. How do I get my content to to fit what, what people need, Want you know, need, yes. exactly. I mean, you know, LA I've gone to, so check this out. And this is, you know, I, I, I told LA on the, the call yesterday, uh, for all the people listening, I was like, dude, I want to like, I want to hear some cha-chings in my, <laughs> in my video. <laughs> I was like, I love it when I hear that. And it, Cause I'll, I'll hear a cha-ching and then I'll go back and rewind it and listen to it again. Just make mm -hmm. sure I heard it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyways, the human brain gets bored after about three seconds. Wow. Uh, yeah. So you told me something. I thought it was eight. <laughs> right. Um, so I have gone towards, if you check out my page, the tattooed sales guy, mm -hmm. I am gone almost strictly to video usage. So I did this really cool thing, which I had never seen before. And actually, I've had a lot of people off these um, car industry groups ask me about it and start implementing it. And they're actually like sending me all their videos now um, and asking advice. But my reviews, I have gone to where I actually have a hold in my phone. I have, I've, I've bumped up to a GoPro now, um, but I, I'll do a video review. So I'll introduce myself. I introduce what car I just saw, or the couple or the person, I introduce the car and then I put the camera on them and ask them what their experience was with me. So now, and if someone's quote unquote seeing my review, instead of just reading some black words on a white screen that has no emotion to it, they're seeing these people's faces. They're seeing these people's body language. They're seeing that, hey man, 
this person actually really means Zach was awesome, not just faking it for a, you know, a Facebook review. Yep. So I've gone to all video and another cool thing LA about the videos is your videos show how many times they've been viewed, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's the way of the world. And if we don't adapt to the way of the world, then we're going to get left behind. But people judge you, unfortunately, based off your views, right? Yes. It's, it's a very unfortunate thing. But if someone's coming to buy a vehicle from the tattooed sales guy versus someone's coming to buy a car from the blind phone master and the blind phone master has more views and more reviews and more likes they're coming to you all day long it's and that's, it's a it's a, it's a subconscious thing so it's actually as crazy as it is and and maybe i'll teach you something else when it comes to this so there's a neurological and i'm going to keep it kind of layman's terms but there's like a neurological thing that happens in your brain when you get on social media you are actually while you're scrolling social media and you're you're flipping through Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I just like this guy's post. I keep scrolling. I I just commented on this guy's post. Keep scrolling. I just like this girl's picture. There is a neurological thing that happens where you actually justify your time on social media when in your brain, deep in your brain, when you feel like you've validated your time being on that social media, whether it be either receiving likes and comments Mm -hmm. or giving likes and comments. Once you feel like you validated your time, that's actually when you get off. It's a subconscious (laughs) and a neurological thing that happens. So I do it all the time. (laughs) Exactly, man. So I try to feed off that, you know, like I actually taught this to a school. My wife graduated, um, she is a hairstylist and I actually came in and taught their entire class about branding themselves and, um, Facebook marketing. And so basically if you start seeing when I post, I post at, at high volume times on social media. Um, and I, I also post specific things. So unfortunately, a lot of people like to be on their phone while they drive, whether it be illegal or dangerous, they still do it. So mm-hmm. if I am going to post from, I mean, what are most people doing between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m.? They're mm-hmm. driving to work. work. So in traffic. in traffic. So you don't have a lot of time to sit there and read a post that has a huge title. So that's when you want to keep your branding going. Like it can just be a simple logo or just a simple image that they can see that image stand alone, not have to read anything and understand, oh, that was the tattooed sales guy that posted that. And then they keep scrolling. Generally around lunchtime is when they have, you know, a little bit more time to dive into something. So I'll kind of post something with a little bit of a, a um, title or description for them to kind of read light reading. Again, you're five to six o'clock in time. They're driving home. So again, nothing too, too wordy that it's going to distract them because they're just going to skip past it. Um, also, you know, later on at night, you can kind of hit on something with a little bit more content and stuff because they're, mm-hmm. they're done, put the kids to bed and all that. Um, now, now the trick is, so Sunday is when you post your heartstring stuff. Most people are getting out of church. They've already, you know, they've been preached to. So they, they've got their heart warmed up. And that's when you come in with the, the more emotional posts and stuff. And you kind of feed off that, you know, that heart string. Um, So yeah, it's crazy. I, you know, I wouldn't know any of this unless I just wanted to apply myself to better my brand and, and figure out how to make myself be 1% better tomorrow than I was today. Man, that's absolutely phenomenal stuff. You were giving people some major, major nuggets, man. So totally appreciate that. So here's the situation, man, when it comes to getting better, right? Obviously you had to train yourself to, to do that. So talk about, uh, you know, the industry, what should people train on? Uh, how often should they train? Like, when did you go out and get this information? So I'll tell, just tell you about myself. I'm the kind of person where I wake up, you know, I'm up 4.30 in the morning, five o'clock in the morning and people, you know, even recently, 
really, people think I'm asleep, but I'm, you know, reading stuff on my phone. I'm learning, I'm listening to podcasts. I'm watching YouTube videos. I'm, you know, just trying to better myself. And so people are like, well, how did you learn how to do that? That's what waking up at 4 30 in the morning does. So that's what <laughs> worked for me, but what worked for you? When, when did you <clears throat> stuff? How did it work for you? Uh, man, no, I, I hundred percent agree with, with the waking up earlier. So, um, if you can actually get yourself, so check this out. So if you can actually wake yourself up two hours earlier, and when I say wake up two hours earlier, I don't mean wake up two hours earlier, go to bed two hours earlier. Mm -hmm. Like if you can actually cut your eight hours of sleep down to six, and then obviously we can make up some of that time on our off days because I don't mm -hmm. want to put someone in a bad health situation. Right. So do your research and see what your body can handle. But if you, and what I did, if you can take, and, I, and I'm going back to this, everyone has the same 24 hour day, right? Yep. So if you can actually wake up two hours earlier and you multiply two hours times your 30 day month, that's 60 hours. That is now LA. I'm getting five work weeks in a month versus Joe Schmo who's sleeping in is only getting four. Mm. I get a whole extra 60 hour work week in my month by just waking up two hours earlier. So um, much to like what you said, dude, I, I started waking up earlier now instead of the, instead of in the gym or in my commute, Instead of listening to, listening to music that does not apply anything to my life, I listen to podcasts, man. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to figure out something that I don't know. Someone else, I mean, y'all got a guy that y'all just hosted on the podcast that's making $300,000 a year selling cars. <laughs> He's doing the same thing I'm doing. He's got the same 24 hours in a day and the same 30 days in a month that I do what am I, what is he doing that I'm not? That's it, man. Man, listen, I'm telling you, you're really cooking with fire, cooking with gas, they call it. Uh, because, I mean, you're giving people exactly what they need to hear. Here's the situation. Uh, and e even for me personally, I have something called 924, right? It's the whole, you know, being blind, you don't see when, uh, you know, the lights are up and stuff like that. So what I want you to know is that don't do this stuff because we're telling you to do it. I think you should do it because you're excited to do it, because that's the reason why I wake up and, and click on podcasts. That's the reason why I click on YouTube, because I'm excited to learn something new. And exactly. so that is that's the reason, because if you do it for any other reason uh, outside of your personal excitement, your personal desire. Right. They talk, they talk about I'll give you a book anyway. Right. They talk about right. that in the book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, think and grow rich, right? Napoleon Hill's think and grow rich, right? Desire is the beginning of all of this stuff, man. You got to have a burning desire. So that's amazing stuff. So here's the thing, man, because we've been chatting for a minute, man, and you've definitely been giving them some, some nuggets. Uh, I know you're in the millionaire car salesman uh, group. And so, of course, if people want to contact you, they can, you know, get with you through there. But I want to know in this short period of time, like, what do you love about the automotive industry? Oh, man. Uh, so I've always said growing up, like, grease, gas, and glory. If it's got a motor, I'm mm -hmm. into it. I absolutely love them. Um, I love that. That was the one thing when I was switching over from the Harleys. I was like, man, I don't know, like, I'm, if I'm going to like it as much. Dude, I'm having a blast, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I just took in a 600 and 620 horsepower Z28 Camaro on trade last week. Dude, I've been driving the crap out of it. Like, <laughs> dude, uh, we just took in a 2018 GT350 on trade with 3,000 miles on it. Been driving the crap out of it. Dude, I, I'm loving it. I'm having a blast. And it's it's putting myself into a financial freedom state that some people, uh, Grant Cardone will flip if he hears me say this guy's name, but I don't really don't care. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we've been doing the whole Dave Ramsey thing and like getting out of debt. And, you know, I owe the automotive industry for that. But uh, it's a funny thing. Dave Ramsey always says the grass, when you get out of debt, the grass feels greener. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a hundred percent true, man. Uh, my wife and I, um, because of the car, uh, the car industry, and the motorcycle industry, we have paid off 
almost all of our debt. We will actually be 100% debt free uh, in the next nine months. And that is including us bankrolling our wedding and honeymoon and our daughter's birth. Bro, Mm -hmm. I was able to go to my daughter's birth and hold her and cry with her knowing that there was not a single bill held over my head. Mm -hmm. Like it made that experience that much better. Um, And because this is the Millionaire Car Salesman podcast, and I know that you always bring that up, because of following the Dave Ramsey steps and then applying myself at my work to make more money and and just better myself, uh, before I came to the Ford dealership at age 59 and a half, when my wife and I retire, um, before I came to the Ford industry, it was looking like we were going to end up with about seven and a half million in our retirement. And now it's looking closer to 12. And um, I'm actually, I'm not there yet, but if I can keep pushing it, I'm looking to have about a million dollars in assets by the age of 55. If I continue growing the way I'm growing. Yeah. And and I like what you just said. And I think yeah, I like it for different reasons, because you said, if you continue to grow the way you're growing personally, I really believe you're going to grow bigger than that, right? I really believe by the time in the next 25 years, you're going to go back and listen to this podcast and be like, damn, I was thinking small. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude, I love I'm it, telling man. you what I know, right? Because, Dude, I love it. Yeah, so so 100%, man. So listen, you're going to say stuff. Um, you said a lot of stuff on this podcast that Grant will agree with and a lot of stuff that Dave will agree with. It's not about, you know, people agreeing or worrying about what you say, man. Listen, you got you to gotta sing your song, right? Hey, it works. Thanks for me, bro. Tell your story, man. So this has been absolutely phenomenal. So let's kind of close this thing out uh, with a bang. What are, what what do you want people to know? I mean, if they are in the industry, and I don't I, I don't know because I mean I, I would love to do a kind of a question to answer. Maybe we got to do a part two for this thing uh, where we do it on a Facebook Live where people can ask you questions directly or kind of just do it on your own, whatever case, man. I'd love I'd to love that. Hang out with you. Um, but the key is like what what should people know? I mean, listen, you just came into this thing. Uh, you sold twenty. 21 cars in 18 days. You sold 23 cars in, in 22 days, well, 24 cars in 23 days, right? And so yeah. your goal is to stay above the market, right? Because, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't make any sense for people to say, you know, my goal is to sell 20 cars this month. That means that your 30 day month, you plan to not succeed in 10 of those days. It's amazing how people do stuff like that. So what do you right. want people to know? Man, uh, actually, and I said this to someone yesterday, he hit me up and he's like, bro, I've been following you for a while. Um, he was like, you know, I'm, I'm brand new into the automotive industry. And I was like, he was like, what is your number one word of advice? And I said, sell yourself, sell yourself, dude, you, you mean to tell me those first 10 days that I worked those first two weeks, do you think I knew anything about Ford? <laughs> I didn't know anything, bro, mm-hmm. but I sold Zach Williams. I sold the tattooed sales guy to those people. I sold them and I told them the truth. I was honest to them. Dude, I came from the Harley world. You think it was a good idea for my well-being to lie to a Harley dude to try and sell them? Mm. Absolutely not. Right, right. <laughs> so absolutely. I took that mindset with me into the automotive industry. Like, I'm honest. I'm 100% honest. If I don't know, I will find out and I will tell you I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I, I sell myself. I go above and beyond to, to connect with people on on like a, a mental level like I, I try to figure out who they really are i try to figure out what their needs are and then i do my sales pitch based on them and what they need not what i want not what i need you know <laughs> yeah i could probably i could probably upsell them but you know the average the average person buys a new car every every three years mm-hmm. and then someone inside of their inside their household their household buys a new car every 24 months <laughs> within 90 days so if i were to lie to them and and cheap them out of, of a good experience then i've just shot myself in the foot for what five sales in the next six years <laughs> off that one customer Crazy. so so being being honest, man, being honest and sell yourself. The products will come. You'll you'll get the knowledge on the products. You'll be able to talk about the products. But first off, if they don't like you, they're not going to buy from you. Mm. 
That's amazing stuff. So, man, I'm telling you, you you you, you plan on getting the referrals, right? The recurring business, it's all about that. And so, man, you've just been giving people the absolute nuggets that they need, man. So I totally appreciate you, you know, just taking the time out to, you know, hang out with our listeners, man, because uh, I know that they're going to appreciate it, man. So listen, and here's the thing. I also want to say this because we didn't spend a lot, a lot of time, and I know we talked uh, briefly about uh, the car accident and all that good stuff, but I did that on purpose, right? Because so many times, um, you know, people, they lay on stuff like that. They dwell on it, right? And it's like, oh, well, it's me, right? Even for, right. you know, I lost my sight and all that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, look, that guy was a daggone roadblock. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. Next, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly, man. That's I kind mean, of mentality. So hopefully, listen, and now trust me, I'm not wishing another accident like that on you, but hopefully you experience some stuff, right? Some adversity in your life. Because I'm telling you, that's how you're going to get that that number that, that you were thinking, that 12 million. That's how you're going to get that number to seem small to you is because you're going to come up against some adversity and you're going to have two options. Either you attack or you retreat, but you never retreat. You always attack. And so that's some beautiful stuff, man. So again, like I said, listen, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with and you've just spending time with the Williams brothers LA <laughs> Williams and Zach Williams man so it's your turn you got to go out there and be a millionaire car salesman thanks so much everybody for listening thanks for joining us Zach yes sir my man ladies and gentlemen if you like it you love it you want more of it then don't wait for the next money show just go to bradleyondemand.com and take your career to the next level.